Hello and welcome back to God's One Chosen Channel. I am Apostle and we are continuing the study, Pornography and the Christian Man. Uh, this is part two of the series. When we left you last, I think Paul was pointing out to them that uh, the Holy Spirit is actually in our bodies and is the temple of the Lord and we shouldn't take the Lord to situations that he doesn't uh, approve of. I mean, he asked, would you take the Spirit of God with you to an encounter with a prostitute. And if we look at that literally, that would be such a bad thing. That's like having Jesus right there looking while you're partaking in such a sinful, sexually immoral act. But before we left, we gave you the um, scripture of 1 Corinthians. I think it was uh, chapter 10, verse 8, where Paul was giving the church at Corinth through a letter. He was giving an, an example of how much God really does not like sexual immorality where he showed them what 23,000 people were actually killed in one day because they were sexually immoral. Once again, that scripture was 1 Corinthians 10, and we'll start at verse 9. I'm sorry, we'll start at verse 8. And the Bible reads, We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test the Lord as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angels. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has seized man, you or any other man, except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Now what the Apostle Paul was showing them was actually that, yes, God knows about the temptation. God is never going to tempt you more than you can actually refuse. It's not, there's no way God is going to put you in a situation where you're tempted on a level where God knows you can't refuse that temptation. It also says a little further that God will give you a way out every time you are tempted. Now, think about the last time. Now, the last time that we spoke about it, we actually know that temptation is a tool that the devil used, and pornography is another form of temptation. Some people think that because you're not physically touching someone, that that is not a sexual sin. That is not sexual immorality. Well, I think in John 2, verse 16, it speaks of the lust of the eyes. And Paul painted out in Corinthians that if we bring the Holy Spirit to an area that's not conducive to what he's about, that he does not like or that he's called sin, do we really want to do that? Well, that is the same thing by looking at pornography. It's no difference. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go a little further. I think we should also expound on it a little further through the Old Testament once again because I think people think that we only deal with the New Testament and they say that we don't deal with um, with the law and all that good stuff like that when actually the New Testament is a fulfillment of the Old Testament. And actually what the New Testament says for you to do is not to lust after her beauty. And don't be deceived because she is a deceiving woman. And if you read in Proverbs 6 and 25, you'll see that he's talking about a prostitute. And people don't think that a prostitute and the ladies in the movies are the, not the same. They are the same. We've pointed out to them they are ladies having sex for money. And in Ephesians 5 and 3, I think God says, among you there must not be a hint of sexual immorality. Now, there shouldn't be a hint of sexual immorality among Christians. How can you watch pornography and it be okay with God? No, it is not okay with God, and it never will be okay with God. See, God mentions greed and idolatry every time he mentions sexual immorality. We've shown you in the scripture. If you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and you start at verse 3, and you read through verse 5, you'll see that God was supposed to be sanctified and to have control of our bodies because God commands us. If we're going to walk in the spirit, not, we shouldn't walk in the flesh because if we walk in the flesh, we will fall immediately into temptation. We should always study the Bible. We should always go to God. This is why we use several scriptures. I don't want anyone to say, well, you take one scripture and you go out of context with it. No, we're going to give you several scriptures where God has actually showed you uh, what he thinks about what we're talking about because that is scriptural backing. Once again, you go to 1 Thessalonians, you go to Colossians 3 and 5, where it says, put to death sexual lust and desires and greed, which is idolatry. Once again, he speaks of greed and idolatry when he speaks of sex, sexual immorality. Now, this is why we use the several scriptures, because it gives you validity and it gives you scriptural backing of what God says. Now, pornography is a tool of the devil, and we must always come back to the devil with spiritual warfare. The Bible says, put on the breastplate of righteousness and have the word as your sword. This is the word. 
The word is Jesus. Jesus was the word. He came and walked among us, and he was manifested in human flesh, and he was the word. He was lie, and the word is a lie today. So we must always apply the word to what is going on in our lives today. Now, what we want to know is, in Hebrews 13 and 4, if you look, it's for the married man. If you're a married Christian man, we don't want you to think that it's not about you because that is the main Christian man that's bothered by this because we, we view this as not cheating because we're not touching a woman. We're not having sex with a woman, but we're having mental sex with another woman. And women don't like that, and God does not like that. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll go to Hebrews chapter 13, and we'll start at verse 4. The Bible reads, marriage should be honored by all, and marriage in the bed should be kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Now, God actually is talking to the married man in Hebrews. He's actually saying now, marriage should be respected at all times. And he says you will be punished for sexual immorality. The reason why you have to respect marriage at all times, it's not only conducive for you to not cheat on your wife if she's right there. You have to respect her and love her enough in the name of Christ, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the love of God, that no matter where you are, you're not going to cheat on her. This is what he's saying. You must respect your marriage at all times, meaning when you watch pornography, you're not respecting your marriage because you are looking at another woman in her nakedness having sex with another man. And you are receiving gratification through masturbation, through fantasies, whatever it is that you're doing. You have to understand that this is not of God. And we as Christian men must go to the Bible and see if we measure up. Apostle Paul said, use this to measure yourself up. And God is going to convict us and he's going to show us things that we are not doing, that we should be doing. And all we can do is take up our cross and follow Jesus and thank him for the grace and mercy and thank him for the sacrifice. Because we are work of building in progress. God is building us daily. He's taking things out. He's putting things in. And we are learning and we are growing and we thank him for that. Now, this is part two of the series, Pornography and Christian Men. We know it's a problem among us, and we need to speak about it. If you go to a church, it would be so great if you would just speak to the men of your church about it. Have a group session about it. Let's get it out in the open, and let's deal with it, and let's put the devil where he belongs, under our feet. Because James says, in the book of James, it says, if you resist the devil, he will flee. And we are resisting the temptation of pornography. Yes, it is free. Yes, it is on the Internet. Yes, it is on cable. But guess what else is on the Internet? We are studying the Bible on the Internet. The devil does not rule anything. The devil has to get permission from God to do anything that he does. Just like God anoints us to do what he wants us to do, God has to give him permission. And the devil is a liar. Pornography is cheating. And it is not something that a man of Christ, a man with Christ abiding inside of him, should partake in. I pray that you will ask God to deliver you from that. I pray that you will ask God to give you revelation and discernment to show you that he's not happy with that. That is not the only thing that plagues us as Christian men. It is just one of the things. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be tackling the devil on every bound because he's coming at us on every bound. But we have the word. We have grace and mercy. The Father in heaven has given us authority through Jesus Christ, and we are not afraid. Once again, I thank you for coming to God's One Chosen Channel. I thank you for partaking in the series, and I pray that God will add wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and peace to your life. Please come back again. I love you, and thank you. Thank <laughs> you.